Be part of unearthing Africa's gold. Be part of the Joburg Film Festival. Hi there, my name is Sipongwenya and welcome to another episode of the Joburg Film Festival content series brought to you by Multi-Choice. And as you guys know, these conversations are about, you know, the film industry, the television industry involving, you know, some very famous actors, producers, directors, you name it. Today, I have the privilege of sitting next to one of the most acclaimed or decorated directors in SA. This guy, I mean, look, when I, when I read the CV, I thought to myself, how did this guy accomplish so much in such a short space of time, right? And I'm glad to be having this conversation with you, Fusi Africa, welcome. Thank you, thank you, Sipo. Yeah. Um, in your intro, you're saying very famous producers and directors. <laughs> I'm just thinking, do I follow into that category? Okay. <laughs> Listen, okay, okay. Let, let, let's let's backtrack then. Yes. For those people at home who actually don't know who you are, because I had the privilege of checking out your CV and stuff, yeah. right? Just yeah, give them certainly. a bit of info about you know your background, where you come from, and, and how you got to be where you are right now. Well, I was born in I was born in Whitbank, um, which is in Pumalanga, and I was raised in a township called Gwakuka. Um, and I, I mean, my, my upbringing stems from theatre culture, you know, my mom is a poet mm -hmm. and my dad was a sculptor before he passed on. So I've always been surrounded by, um, I've always been inspired by work and been inspired by ideas, you know, because that's how I was raised, um, with the sense of generating ideas. So my journey started with theatre, you know, worked my way up, um, did a few shows with the National School of the Arts, with the um, National um, Arts Festival. And then I decided, oh, okay, well, it doesn't look like there's much money <laughs> yeah, going around. <laughs> I bought, I bought. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. just like, no, you know what? Um, and then that's when I went to film school. I went to film school in about 2013. I graduated in 2017, 2016. Mm. I made my first feature, Letters of Hope, in 2017. Mm. Um, and I think I think it is Letters of Hope that catapulted my career um, to to where it is right now. Because after that film, I never looked back, you know. And I've, I think one thing that sort of has placed me ahead or has placed me within the space is the fact that um, I tell stories that I know and I'm always writing from the truth, you know, and um, more than anything else, I am always looking to inspire, mm -hmm. you know, um, mm -hmm. other than just to make a film, just to make a film, mm -hmm. you know, I want to change someone's life who's sitting across there. So I think that's why my work resonates with people and maybe that's why people feel like I'm prominent, you know, mm -hmm. I think it's the work that is prominent. As for Vusi Africa, I'm not prominent as yet. Mm. My time is come, definitely. Look, man, in the, like I said, in the short space of time, I think the work that you have already done now has certainly made you one of the top directors in, in, in the country, maybe even on, on, the, on the continent, right? And, and I, I actually like what you said in terms of storytelling because the theme for this year's Joburg Film Festival is Our Stories, Our Gold. And I think it's about telling that authentic African story that will resonate with the pe people that you know, right? Which will make you successful. And I think in a way, that's kind of like how you have made it. And yeah, no, most certainly. If, if you look at Africa, Africa is very rich um, in, in raw material in terms of story. You know, you've got folklore, you've got mythology, you know, you've got the historic context of Africa. You know, the Queen of Sheba, you know, you've got Timbuktu, you know, you've got the seven temples in mm. Ethiopia. It's just so much wealth mm. that Africa has. And that wealth can be turned into stories. Just that it's, it's, it has been a bit unfortunate that we haven't seen that um, literature wealth translate into an actual industry um, in terms of the storytelling. We've seen bits and pieces, you know, of the brilliance that Africa has. And I think the latest is um, the woman king, mm. you know, mm. which is a story that stems from Africa. And I think it is important that we are conscious of um, the raw material that we have. And I think the immediate time we are conscious of the raw material we have, we're going to start treating it as raw material, mm. you know, um, mm. because I think a lot of times we are often looking for ideas mm. and we are often searching for stories. And the stories are right here within us. The first film I made, Letters of Hope, the story was told to me by uh, Patrick Sibande, who's the son of Hart Sibande, the Lion of the East. Mm. And the second film that I made was told to me by my friend. You know, mm -hmm. and when we were sitting together and he, and he told me the story, you know, so, uh, so I'm yet to make a story that I've thought of. 
Oh, wow. You know, um, the stories that I've made, the stories that, you know, I, I'll be sitting with you and you'll tell me, I'm like, oh, wow, that's, that's a nice movie, mm, mm. you know. So I think if we are ready to listen and we are ready to pay attention, we can see the raw material. It's all over us. Okay, so I, I like where we're going with this, right, which leads me to my next question around how as a director do you go, okay, this is a story I want to tell. Like, you know, I'm sure, sure you, you probably get, get a few you know, stories on your table, right? Where it's like, here's a movie, please can you be a part of this and direct it. How do you, how do you go about choosing and saying yes or no? I think for me, it always boils down to one question. Is this gonna live forever? Um, and if yes, maybe. Is this gonna change someone's life? If yes, then definitely. Mm. You know, for me, I look at those two things because it is important. I mean, um, looking at the films that have inspired me, films like Schindler's List, mm. you know, um, those are films that um, speak to the fiber of society. You know, even though they address the crises that have happened into the world, mm. but they speak to who you are. You know, they address issues that we've faced and they bring us closer to humanity, mm. you know, and they make us um, empathize and understand, you know. So I want to do work that speaks to people. I want to do work that um, influences people, influences their ideology, influences their decisions. Mm. You know, um, you look at a film like Forrest Gump, you know, it's a it has Brilliant a huge story. influence. Mm. When you watch that film, if you've got a low self-esteem after watching that film, mm. it's gonna dramatically change your life. Mm. You know. So for me, I'm always looking for you know for stories that are gonna impact and not just impact, but somehow force you to take action to change something in your life that is not going right. And which is brilliant because I, in a previous interview, I asked um, Shamela Miller about. Um, representation you know in, in our stories and and I think I also want to pose this question to you to then say in us telling stories do you think that there is enough authentic African stories being told on our mainstream platforms right because if you look at what has happened globally they've been we've kind of like been in a way brainwashed by what is a good story to tell. Yeah, right? certainly. Uh, certainly. What's, what's your take on that? Certainly. I think, uh, you know, when you look at the work of, of Tomaselli, you, you get to understand how far um, the South African industry comes. We are one of the first industries in the world, you know, and um, as, as much as we are so um, so old as an industry, we are still yet to reach our fullest potential as an industry. And because of the fact that we are still to reach our full potential, maybe we are still doing some fact-finding mission, you know, um, trying to identify the formulas that are working. And in maybe trying to identify those formulas, we are gonna make a few mistakes here and there, you know, and try to emulate what is working for other people, which might not necessarily work for us, you know. And the culture of television that we are seeing now, it is very much influenced by what is happening internationally. Mm -hmm. And we as South Africa come from a very rich um, culture of television, which happened in the 80s and the 90s, you know. And when 94 came along, it sort of felt as if, you know, we, we had to transition from, you know, from everything. And that rich culture that we had, you know, that gave birth to Bomo Peme, mm, you know, mm. that gave birth to all those beautiful stories, mm. you know, that we used to see in the 80s and 90s, you know, sort of faded out, you know, and now sort of came in the new. And the new now was, you know, looking at the global story, you know, um, the love story that can translate globally. And it doesn't necessarily mean that if something has to translate globally, it must be foreign. It is key that we, even if we are looking at a rom-com, can we look at it from a South African perspective, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. and, and I hate speaking about my own work because now it seems as if I'm, you know, I'm, I'm biting my own tail, <laughs> right? But if you look at Surviving Gaza, Surviving Gaza is a rom -com. It's, a, it's, it's a romantic drama, mm -hmm. you know? But it is told using the, the ideology of, of, of a township you know, of the love language that we see in the township, you mm. know, uh, you know, mm. um, you're chilling at home and then you're hearing the noise outside, yeah, when I know I'm sa -sa -sa -sa, you know, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. you know, I'm yeah. being dragged, you know, yeah. being forced to live. Those are relationships yeah. we know. Yeah. But then when you come into the big screen, the relationships you see are way different. Mm. They are so foreign. Mm. And that's where the issue of representation comes in. Mm. Are we seeing ourselves on the big screen? Of course. You know what of I'm course. saying? So we need to see ourselves, you 
you know, and I think that is the work that travels. You know, the work that travels is the work that shows us who we are, you know, and it shows the people of where we come from and, you know, so that they can also feel like they connect, you know. So I think at this stage, there's some, you know, uh, fact-finding mission that is happening maybe two three four years later you know we are going to be confident and trust our own raw material and be confident in you know in in the raw material that um, that that we have and if uh, you look at the international spaces and how we've occupied them there is a need for a South African voice. You look at films like Ingeba, you know, mm. um, those are films that have spoken to, you know, to the world. Films like Sarafina, mm. you know, films like District 9, you know, those are films that have spoken to the world, you know, from a South African context. Sure. So the world does want to see us. We need to represent ourselves. I think mm. we need the confidence to trust the fact that we've got it and we can then fall onto our raw material and start believing in our story and represent ourselves properly. On that note, do you, do you though feel that, that there isn't enough effort, right, from the industry, you know, at large, on trying to create more diversity in our stories, right? Make an example. If you some of the movies you've you've, you've mentioned, they still, you know, you know, centered around apartheid and the struggle, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, which I think is is still relevant. But I mean, it's I think it's a narrative that's been told, yeah. you know, extensively. Yeah. Don't you think to some point we owe it to our audiences to try try and diversify the stories that we tell on our big screens? No, we definitely do. We definitely need to diversify the stories we, we tell or, um, on our screens. Um, but I think it's also important that we have an understanding of the fact that we've got our own genres in South Africa. I believe that apartheid has become a genre, just like the Western, mm. okay. you know? Okay. You know, it's, okay. you know uh, we can make the Western in so many different ways, mm. you know? And the apartheid story, we can make it in so many different ways. I think if we start looking at it as a genre, mm. you know, specifically, mm. you know, um, as a taste of filmmaking, and then we're gonna start becoming more tolerant to it because we don't want to lose that part of you know of, of our sector you know we want to keep telling those stories so that people who are coming behind us can actually always have an understanding mm. and i think the the challenge that we have with the diversity is the fact that um there is always a vis-a-vis -vis between what the audience wants to see and what the filmmakers want to make and what the funders are ready to fund mm. and the funders will always lean towards what the audience wants to see mm. you know but nobody is really asking the right question and the right question should be which direction should we be taking you know from a cultural perspective sure. in our storytelling you know and i think once we look at it from a cultural perspective and say how do we want to influence the world as south africa you know from our stories from our you know right now cbc they are here making shaga, you know, mm. um, and it's it's kind of hurting. I know Multi Choice has done it also, but it's kind of hurting, you know, mm. to you know to see international corporations coming into you know to to make our stories, you know, which means that we are not actually doing enough, you know. We don't believe enough. We don't have enough faith in our stories, you mm. know. Th there was a time <laughs> when um, we. We're missing trends, and maybe now rom coms are trending. You know, everybody wants to do a rom com, mm. you know, and now this is trending, everybody wants to do that. You know, mm. I think we need to have. We need to encourage uniqueness in our industry, you know, and I think it's spaces like JFF that sort of, you know, bring in different directors, different voices, sure. you know, otherwise those voices wouldn't have a chance in the mainstream, you know, sure. um, voices that somehow um, make work that is seen as not so commercial you know so i think that the issue is there the issue is that the industry has a desire mm. to be commercial mm. um and it has a desire to lean more towards what the audience want instead of wanting to shape a culturally inclined industry like how hollywood has done mm. you know hollywood mm. is a culture superman uh batman you know t-shirts boxers it's a culture mm. you know it just doesn't end on the screen it translates to clothes to books it translates to everything i think we need to approach our industry from that okay. you know and the only way we can do that is by having stories that are centered in who we are no i, I fully get that so what, what i'm understanding is that you almost saying that it, it, we need to view it as a business as opposed to just we are telling a story Right, so then it translates into the merchandising, into the uh, and the uh, and those other ancillary rights that you can possibly. And there's exploit. too much focus on the audience. You know, mm. the audience also they don't know what they want to see. Did they know they wanted to see Star Wars before it was made? They didn't know. Mm. 
Did they know they wanted to see The Godfather before it was made? Mm. They had no idea mm. that they wanted to see these films. Mm. But once these films were made, they were ready to appreciate, you know. Mm. So I think it's about having the right thinkers at the top, mm. you know, within our space. You know, people who can actually influence their agenda in favor of filmmakers who are actually interested in telling the stories that, um, that the world wants to see, but they don't know yet that they want to see. With that said then, what kind of support then do you think is needed from a director's point of view um, when, when in that ideation process? Because, you know, as, as, as large corporations like Multi-Choice, you know, they've got a, a, a very strict policy in terms of, of how they go about, you know, submissions, etc. right? And if they're obviously going to be investing into something, there's certain boxes that they want to be ticked for a particular story, which is, always informed on research, right? And I think we, we, we're still getting there, but what do you think needs to be done more to be able to encourage directors and producers to come forward um, and, and trust these corporations to invest in, into their ideas? Well, well for me, I think, um, yeah, I don't think there's a, there's a lack of trust, or well, there is trust between, you know, corporations, directors, industry, and so forth. I think the only missing link that, um, that we have is a more open policy. You know, I think the industry is so it's very much enclosed, you know, to clandestine, you know, um, to, to, to a certain degree that work ends up gathering dust, you know, in the computer, mm. you know, and it never gets out, mm. you know. So I think we need more opportunities that can actually give a platform to diverse voices, you okay. know, instead of maybe us saying we need more diverse voices, let's create the platforms, you know, to, to get diverse voices, you know. It's, the industry we have in South Africa is a bit funky, you know, where, you know, um, it's unlike in America <laughs> where, you, where you win awards and then suddenly poof, 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 you know, <laughs> yeah. things are lighting up for you and yeah. you've got work lined up, you mm. know. In South Africa, things kind of, they don't sort of work like that, I don't know, maybe it's just me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah, that look, of, I think we're still getting there, right? yeah. We, we're sort of still getting there, yeah. You I know? think but I think we need a more open policy, yeah. Look, I, the red carpet, the red carpet um, industry is, is very difficult to manage, especially if you don't have you know the do dollars back in you. No, that's right? true, yeah. So, that's true, yeah. That is so true, but nonetheless, let me bring the conversation back to where I actually wanted, wanted us to go around opening up the industry, right. So I'm just going to pose one question for you as, as a director, and I'm sure maybe there was a point where you felt like maybe this would not happen for you, yeah. right? No, um, definitely. In the sense that some directors might feel like they are being, um, I don't know, overlooked. Overlooked, yeah. You know, be because the same work goes to the same directors, etc. How is the industry for you in terms of opening the industry? And if it's not, what more needs to be done from a director's uh, point of view? Well, I come, I come from an independent filmmaking space. You know, uh, I can make a film with 20 cents, honestly. Mm -hmm. You know, um, for me, it, it has never been about money, you know. So I think a lot of times when people speak about opening up the industry, they're referring to funding, mm -hmm. you know. So for me, I've never had, I've never had a challenge of not being in the industry because I don't view the industry as a particular place that we must all come to you know I view myself as an industry you know um, me myself is Lucy Africa I'm an entity you know if I can create work that two three people can see maybe tomorrow I can create work that four or five people are gonna want to see you know as the years go by it just gets better and better and better so I think as young filmmakers we really need to look at how do we make stories with without needing help. Mm. First things first. That's mm. the most imperative question that you have to ask yourself. Mm -hmm. How do I tell a story without needing help first? Mm. Because is there anybody who is going to trust you walking into their door and you're just like, I'm Vusi Africa and everybody look, looks at you like, Vusi who? Mm. You mm. know? Mm. Um, so, but you need to create the work. You know, you need to create um, the, the, the track record. Mm. You know, that, that's, that's the most important thing. And I think young people in today's time, they are so privileged because they're walking around with 4K cameras in their pockets, mm. you know? Mm. Um, and so it's so easily um, accessible to make a film. And everybody wants to act right now, you know? So uh, is there a shortage of actors? The clearly there isn't a shortage of actors, you know? Maybe there's a shortage of funding, mm. but the issue of funding gets addressed by track record. You know, so the issue of opening up the industry, I think we need to ask ourselves individual questions as people. Have I done enough to put myself into the space or am I expecting the space to put me up? 
because maybe I have an honest degree or I've got an MFA, you know, um, do I have expectations because of that? Or am I disrupting the industry by creating work that is disruptive, making people to pay attention to me, mm. you know, and, and notice that, okay, maybe there's a guy like Fusi Africa that maybe we need to give a chance to and see how, you know, he turns out. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's always an issue of track record and what can you do without needing help before you, you know, you, you sure. say they are closing doors for us. No one is closing doors for anybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's nobody. Look, Pussy Man, I think you and I can have this chat the whole day. <laughs> but unfortunately, we've been cut Certainly. short by time. So uh, I just want to say I, I really enjoyed this conversation. Uh, it was very, very fruitful. And I'm sure whoever's watching this right now has learned many, many lessons. And I just want to say good luck for the future, brother. No, thank you. Definitely. Thank you. Likewise. Lovely. <laughs> well, that's it for this episode of the Joburg Film Festival content series brought to you by Multi-Choice. Until next time.